Thank you, Maria. Um, I appreciate that. You, you know, um, I, I often feel like the work that we do in Citizens Client International at COP is in some ways easier because of all of the people who are organizing locally around the world and who we get to represent. Um, we get to speak for people who aren't present and we get to, um, in that way, open, open doors not just for ourselves and for them, but for ideas that are going to make the process richer. I want to highlight before I kind of go into discussion here, a couple of things that I've heard from several of the panelists. Um, one is that we need to have robust, detailed, ongoing civic processes that enrich the international process. Um, there are great and skilled uh, you know, experts and negotiators like uh, Kwam Rul, um, but no one negotiator has the ability to get the final result. The final result also comes with the political will of political leaders, many of whom never go to the COP venue at all. And so, uh, you know, what we're committed to in Citizens Climate International is helping citizens build political will from their communities to their national level so that the international cooperative process can be stronger, more ambitious. And I think from our perspective, probably everyone here would agree, more reasonable. It's more reasonable for us to have a more ambitious outcome. It's more reasonable for us to say, let's avoid emissions. Let's phase out pollution that damages the biosphere, the planet, the habitability of our world. Um, I'd like to just say a word or two about COP26 from that perspective. Does it meet the standard of being more reasonable by recognizing that ambition is the reasonable way forward? There are a lot of words that were said, a lot of speeches that were given that suggest that, and there were a lot of voluntary commitments that were made that also reflect that idea that high ambition is the more reasonable way forward. Um, but as we've heard from others, some of the outcomes uh, are disappointing. And I'd like to highlight a view of my own, um, which is not always the way we talk about loss and damage, but I don't think that we can succeed against climate change uh, in the technological realm, in the decarbonization realm, if we don't deal with loss and damage. You can't functionally as a world community move forward together if billions of people are being left behind by damage they can't control. Um, we can't ask every nation on earth to do the best that it can do, the best that its people can do with their talents and their ingenuity and their cooperative capabilities if they don't actually have the ability to deploy those things because they're being set back again and again and again by something they can't afford to deal with. Um, it's, it is a justice issue, but it's also a very practical matter for the world community. Are we or are we not going to operate by the standard that, um, you know, we help each other, that we, when we see a person in need, we do something about it. When we see an emergency, we deal with it. When we have caused a problem, we look to rectify it. Um, every nation's legal system however unjust its execution is in some way based on justice as a principle. The ideal is that it should be there. And if we establish in the biggest undertaking in human history that justice is not central, we're going to have problems. Um, we're going to have difficulty following through on the laws we do make. 